Welcome to Moonstone Update. I'm Mark Beshard, the Managing Editor of Moonstone Publications. Here's a look at some of the stories we've covered over the past week. But first, please hit the subscribe button, share this video with your friends and colleagues. There's an 85% probability that South Africa will be grey-listed by the Financial Action Task Force in February next year, mainly because institutions in the criminal justice system were undermined during the era of state capture. A report by Intellidex recommends that companies and individuals prepare for enhanced due diligence that will accompany grey listing. The economic impact of grey listing will depend on the seriousness with which South Africa is perceived to be acting to address the FATF's concerns. The National Assembly Standing Committee on Finance has extended the deadline for submitting comments on the Omnibus Bill aimed at preventing South Africa's grey listing to the 25th of October. At the public hearings on Tuesday, stakeholders expressed their dissatisfaction with the very limited time allowed for consultation on the General Laws Amendment Bill. The JSE says the proposed beneficial owner disclosure requirements for listed companies could result in companies moving their primary listing from South Africa to other jurisdictions. In its presentation to the Standing Committee on Finance, the JSC said it supported the introduction of a central register of the beneficial owners of companies. However, the proposed amendments to the Companies Act were unworkable for publicly listed companies. In its presentation, the Congress of South African Trade Unions called for information about the beneficial ownership of companies to be made publicly available. It said the amendment bill includes a reference to making annual returns available electronically, but it is not clear whether this means these returns will be publicly available. Kosatu says that making beneficial ownership registers publicly available will assist to combat tax evasion and corruption. The FSCA is conducting an online survey of FSP's understanding of what it means to be financially sound. The survey will also enable the authority to understand the impacts of broader environmental risk factors on the sustainability of FSPs. FSPs have until November the 22nd to complete the survey. The FSCA also announced that recordings of the recent workshops it hosted on financial soundness for FSPs are available on YouTube. Trusts under the magnifying glass because of risks identified by the Financial Intelligence Center and the Financial Action Task Force. The FATF warned in 2019 that South Africa should establish better mechanisms to collect beneficial ownership information in trusts and companies. SARS is also turning up the heat on trusts that are not registered for tax purposes or have not filed tax returns in years. The Financial Services Tribunal has decided that it's not procedurally unfair if an FSP fails to provide a representative with a copy of its debarment policy during a disciplinary hearing that leads to their debarment. Standard Bank dismissed and debarred an employee for acting dishonestly. Later, the tribunal brought it to the bank's attention that its debarment policy was not included among the documents that form part of the record. That's all we have for this week. You can read these stories and many more on our website, moonstone.co.za. Until next time, here's wishing you all the best from the team at Moonstone Information Refinery.